السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته friends welcome back to my channel in this video we will discuss how we can calculate a fuse for our power supply for any linear power supply for any circuit what is fuse what are the necessary parameters to select a perfect fuse to give a full protection for our system basically this is a question for, from one of my viewers he asked me I have a request which is how to calculate a value of fuse to use in power supply either SMPS or linear, linear power supply for load of 12 watt 24 volt 12 watt 24 volt forget about volt we have 12 watt that is output first of all we will see what is the fuse fuse is basically a protection for overcurrent or short circuit what is short circuit if we have a circuit here for example we have a power supply it can drive some circuit this is load I can say it is 10 ohm load and I have 10 volt supply so 10 volt 10 ohm the current will 1 ampere due to any reason if there is a some problem there is a cross line which is in parallel to the load so the resistance will decrease we can say up to 1000 times because when anywhere there is a short circuit resistance decreases near to zero it is not zero it is near to zero because there is a some resistance resistance for the wires and other circuits so we can say the RT the load resistance will close to zero in that case the maximum current will flow which can be obtained from the source so that will called short circuit in any short circuit condition the load resistance will drop we can say 1000 times to the loads if it is 10 ohm might be in short circuit condition the resistance will 0.001 ohm 1 million so the resistance will decrease very low point and the current will increase to maximum limit this is called short circuit so short circuit current is the maximum current which can be obtained from any generator any source so it can damage the equipment it can damage the men it can damage all the system then we have another condition we have 10 volt here the load is 10 ohm this is ideal condition so it is providing one ampere but if we put another load 10 ohm in that case two resistors are in parallel so the RT will drop about 5 ohm so the system will draw 2 ampere because V over R if you put another load it is called overload it will call short circuit because the load is bypassed by some other short circuit so the current will select the lowest path but here the current will divided into different paths and the load will reflect it to the drive section that is our source if this source can provide only one ampere so it will be overloaded and if this wiring this all connections are capable to drive one ampere in that case might be this wiring this network will damage so to protect all these systems we need a protection device it may be a fuse it may be a circuit breaker fuse circuit breaker PTC PTC fuse resettable fuse PTC switch are resettable fuse we can select 
any one of these protections to protect this system if here short circuit protection will available we can protect it now we will start the parameters this is the fuse what is fuse fuse is a device which will protect the system from short circuit or which will protect the system from overload how we can determine the value of fuse what is the level of protection if you have not subscribed my, my channel i will request kindly subscribe it and press the bell icon button notification for all so that you will be notified in future for my future videos to calculate a fuse first of all calculate what is the operating current this is smps it can provide 12 watt we apply always fuse in any power supply in the line line and neutral we will pro provide a fuse in the line so that the load should not damage this power supply and if this power supply is overloaded the fuse must disconnect its input so that the power supply must be safe we have 12 watt it is in output what will the input power here if you can say we designed a flyback very nicely designed flyback topology can provide up to peak efficiency that is 90 percent and in normal designs it can 85 to 88 percent for our calculation we can say i am trying to design a circuit or my design is not fully matured so in that condition might be we can obtain 80 percent so 12 watt output output power divided by efficiency so 0.8 12 divided by 0.8 it is 15 watt 15 watt input power for example we are driving our power supply we are operating this power supply at 90 volt to 265 volt or 220 volt we will consider 220 volt the maximum limit input current because the fuse is directly involved with the current p over v we have power 15 watt 220 volt it is 0 0.068 0 0.068 or 6 ampere or 68 milliampere this is the circuit current which will be required 68 milliampere at 220 volt so that this power supply will give us 12 volt after all the losses and drops in the power supply now when we select a fuse the fuse will operate we can say about 75 percent of the total value for very easy calculation this is our 68 milliampere 68 milliampere multiply it by 1.35 so it is 91.8 to select a fuse 68 which is our required current milliampere by 1.35 we can say it is 135 percent so it is 91.8 milliampere so this fuse will be selected 91.8 milliampere now we have to select the upper value 91.8 milliampere and the upper value will we can say 100 milliampere 125 milliampere we can select next fuse 91.8 milliampere what is the voltage value voltage value that is 220 volt voltage value must be the equal or above than the operating voltage you can select a fuse 220 volt you can select a fuse 240 volt you can select a fuse 250 volt now we cover two steps input current input voltage what is the type of voltage either we are selecting a dc circuit or ac circuit if we select a fuse and we operate in 
AC voltage so its current value is always changing so this fuse is always released from a maximum current so that it will behave different to DC circuit but a DC fuse will always be forced by a DC stress and if in case of overload this fuse will bear all the load until it will open so here it have a clearance time here it have no clearance time until it will open so AC type of circuit this is one two three parameters now we have to understand another item any fuse which will be selected that value will be at 25 degree centigrade operating temperature so if we are using at 25 degree centigrade so this value will good but in ideal condition the power supply is to be operated in different weather might be we will use at 45 degree 65 degree for example or we are using in 5 degree for example or minus 15 degree in case of the changing of the ambient temperature or the working temperature of the power supply we have to re-rate or de-rate at each 20 degree change in the ambient temperature 20 degree plus or minus we have to derate or re-rate 10 to 15 percent of this current value for example we are going to operate this power supply at 45 degree 91.8 plus 91.8 multiplied by 0.15 so it will 105.57 milli ampere this plus 15 percent at each change in 20 degree if we will operate this power supply at 65 degree so this power supply will consume 105.57 so it will 121.405 milli ampere so this circuit which we discussed here will require a fuse for this rating or this rating if we will go to cold weather then we will make a minus 91.8 minus 91.8 5 or 15 percent plus one so it will 78.03 milliampere the fuse value will change 78.03 multiplied by 0.15 so it will require 39 milliampere 39 milliampere fuse so the fuse value will automatically change with the change in temperature now from this value we have to select the higher value if we are operating this power supply at 65 degree so the standard value next to this value what is available we can say if we have 150 milliampere we can select it next to this infuse chart if we have 125 milliampere we will select it then 78 we will select 100 milliampere and here we can select 50 milliampere or 75 milliampere what is available so it is the temperature effect on the fuse value depending on the change in temperature at, at each 20 degree plus or minus we have to re-rate we have to add 15 percent of the load current 
of the required current of the total current or in case of decrease in the temperature we have to derate with 15 percent the next most important feature that is step number five available short circuit current how much current can be provided from our system if our generator can provide we can say 10 ampere and we calculate a fuse for 15 ampere so the fuse will never open it will damage the circuit it will damage the generator before opening the fuse so we have to calculate the wiring properly we have to calculate the source current we have to calculate the wiring what is the capability of the wiring what is the resistance of the circuit what is the insulation type when we compare uh, available short circuit current and what is line supply in our utility power supplies we can say we can take 50 million, 50 amperes we have to calculate is the power supply is capable to drive the circuit is the wiring and the other resistance will capable to obtain the load and short circuit protection then we have to select the most critical item for any fuse that is I square T ampere square time A square S I square T or A square S this is the most critical calculation for any fuse for selection of proper protection to understand this we have to understand what is I square T it is called reaction time reaction time of a fuse what is the reaction time in normal condition this fuse is working normally it is driving the load the current is flowing regularly but if there is a short circuit if it is at T0 time started when the short circuit occurred how much time it will take to open the circuit T0 to T1 T0 is that time when the short circuit happened at the overload condition occurred over current situation is started and how much time it will take to clear this situation to protect the circuit that is called TC clearest time clearest time it is the total time when this condition occurred there is a short circuit or there is overload a fuse is piece of wire it have a resistance current will increase from its value its limit it will cause to melt this fuse because it is a fusible wire it will blow how much time will taken to melt melting time plus how much time it will take to arc there will a arc arcing time so ta this total time so when it will arc it will open the circuit when the short circuit started and when the circuit is protected the current is disconnected how much time it will take from T0 to T1 it is called TC clearest time now how we can calculate the fuse capability so that it should open the circuit within that time as I discussed fuse is a piece of wire we are operating at 25 degree centigrade so this fuse will handle up to 100 milliampere current at 100 milliampere its temperature will rise up to we can say 45 degree at 45 degree this wire will open if we place this power supply in 40 degree 
there is no headroom in the fuse because at 45 degree 100 milli ampere this fuse will blow away so if we operate this fuse at 45 degree 40 degree we have just only 5 degree margin to work this fuse so this fuse will damage immediately we can say at 10 or 15 milli ampere the fuse temperature will increase and it will touch to its higher limit and the wire will melt so in that case we have to re-rate the fuse to bring it to give it the proper value if it is 45 degree then we have to set at 60 degree 65 degree so we have to calculate the temperature and the amount of current how we can calculate the pulse current we have this selection chart for different type of pulses and different formulas the most commonly used curve that is here so it is I square T half I P square over T for example we have inrush current here for example we have a peak here in our condition we are using 91 milliampere 91 milliampere current for 25 degree 91.8 or we are selecting a fuse at 125 150 milliampere that is here standard fuse at 60 degree we are using 150 milliampere fuse 250 volt AC this fuse now we have to select the fusible time the arcing time the clearance time for this fuse so that it will handle the pulses the peaks the inrush currents of the circuit when we start any power supply if if our circuit is using some capacitors some surge circuits so this current will reach up to 10 times we can say now it is 150 milliampere so 150 multiply by 10 so this this current will reach up to 1.5 ampere the maximum inrush limitation in our circuit if we are using current limiting circuit we are using NTC PTC to limit the current so we have to consider the inrush current value and the pulses time how much time it will charge to the main capacitor normally the average value from the top to the normal level we select a middle value that is half i peak square 1 over 2 i peak square multiplied by t half p so peak current we have 1500 or 1 1.5 ampere how much time it will take we can say our circuit will this capacitor will charge in 6 milliseconds 5 milliseconds we can say it is 0 0.005 second it is 0 0.0056 0 0.056 to a ampere square second so this is the fuse value when we select a fuse from a data sheet we have to select this parameter it is melting point melting point a square s it is one time fuse if we want to fuse to make a long life we have to derate with a factor this is the amount of one pulse if the fuse is being striked less than this value how many times this fuse will work because at each pulse the fuse will be derated because its material strength will change because every time it have to dissipate the heat it have to reduce its life working life to make it long life 
we have to derate we have to select a good fuse so that the power supply will work for a long time how many pulses we can allow how many times this condition will occur if we use it for, for 10,000 pulses so we have to reach here in this derating curve, curve pulse derating curve so we can say it is 30 percent less than 30 percent 29 percent that is for time lagging fuse what is time lagging that is protection type time lagging and f type fuse quick arcing fuse quick arcing fuse that have no tolerance when this pulse will strike immediately it will cut the line it have no delay if our circuit in quick arcing fuse there is no tolerance if the pulse will reach above than this value above than its, its rated, rated value the fuse will open immediately that have no tolerance so we have to determine our circuit does our circuit have some inrush current circuits like capacitors which are charging some inductors there which makes a surge if we have a surge circuit inrush circuit then we have to select a slow blow fuse that is called time lagging or if we have a fast blow quick arcing fuse at that time that fuse will open immediately and our capacitors will not charge and fuse will open so the type of fuse must be selected very carefully if we have a inrush circuit then we have to select a fuse slow blow type that will delay it will give a specific time in each fuse category it will give a time we can say from 5 millisecond to maybe it will reach up to 1 minute. So it will give a tolerance, its material will not burn immediately, it is called slow blow. And if we have a fast blow, quick arcing, that will open immediately circuit, that is for short circuit protection. The overload protection circuit, the quick arcing, that will protect from short circuit. The slow blow, that fuse will work in this circuit. Some fuses are available which will provide the both protections for short circuit and uh, overload. Basically the overload fuse that is also for short circuit and the overload. So we have to select the fuse. Now in this curve we have to derate the F type and T type. T type is time lagging that is called slow blow fuse. So we will derate with 29% to allow this fuse to work up to 10,000 pulses. So we will derate A square S divided by divided by F. For time lagging it is 0.00562 0.29 so it will 0.0193 1939 we can say it is 0 0.0194 0 0.0194 a square s this is our required value for our melting point so we can say we have to select now a fuse with 150 milliampere that is 65 degree centigrade 150 milliampere 250 volt AC 65 degree centigrade 0 0.0194 ampere squares S second so this fuse will be required for our power supply 150 milliampere first parameter 250 volt AC then 65 degree centigrade and 0 0.0194 A square S these parameters 
are the basic parameters for a fuel selection. Then you can go to any fuel selection tool in any fuel selection catalog. You have to first of all you have to select these parameters melting point then you can select a part number for a fuse. There are some other important parameters we discussed in rush current number 7 then there is purpose of fuse. We discussed do we need short circuit or overcurrent. We selected overcurrent. Time lagging fuse. Time lag fuse. That is slow blow. We need size and limitations. Where we are going to install this fuse. Either we have some restriction, we have some geometry. What are the limitations? If we install this fuse inside any cabinet, inside any casing, we must understand this that the fuse always dissipates power. It is a continuous power dissipation device. It have its own DC resistance. That is, even it is in milliohms, but it can cause to increase the temperature of the housing of the cage of the cabin. So we have to understand this one. Where we are going to install it? Will we install on PCB? Or we we will use throw hole? Either it is SMT surface mount technology. Are we using? Are we installing this fuse for end user? If we are using, if we are making a fuse, making a device for any user, so that any user can replace the fuse. If the fuse will open, he can select the same type of fuse and he can replace the fuse. Or, if you are installing this fuse inside the housing, then end user cannot open the device. You have to check that the efficiency. In that condition, you have to install the fuse inside that assembly so the assembly will return back to you this is our replacement facility where we are going to install it are we going to install some fuse holder if we are going to install on fuse holder the cost will increase because with the fuse we have to use the clips the holders so we have to install the fuse on the PCB we have to install the holders on the PCB then we have to place the fuse so it is mounting style now the second parameter we have to understand the cost effect if we are using to install holder so holder panel mounting holder so it is safe the clamp that is not safe anyone can open this cover and he can replace the fuse either power is connected or power is removed don't care but if we use a fuse with a fuse holder that is plastic casing that is safe we can use it but the cost will increase are we using a panel mounting are we using on the back shell of the assembly so that is the mounting style and everything. Are we are using some fuse blocks like in cars we have a different fuse block. Some wires are coming to the, this fuse block. And these are going outside. Here we have fuse, here we have fuse, here we have fuse. So this fuse block will also increase the amount of the block because it is another assembly so we have to calculate the wiring and the fuse block price as well then there is inline fuse you have a holder here like in the cars in the car stereo tapes we have a fuse just twist the body and you can remove the fuse and you can replace the fuse it is also safe so these are the parameters then the next step that is certification approval if we need a fuse brand quality approved by some 
organization some calibration some authority that fuse will that will increase its price because that fuse have to pass from a special laboratory that that is certified so if you are considering the quality then you have to check the approving authority if you are compromising the quality then you can select a local brand fuse or unbranded fuse so it is up to you so friends i hope so this video is informative if it is informative hit the like button if you have any question please let me know in the comment box thanks for watching assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh